Hi, my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel for a different video. I'm doing something different. I know I end up doing the same book wrap ups all the time, but today I am doing a battle of the books. I have read two books about Joan of Arc and I want to do some comparisons and talk about each of them. So let's jump into that. The first book that I read a couple of weeks ago was Joan by Catherine J. Chen. And I'm going to put that this side of my head. Joan was a fantastic retelling of the story of Joan of Arc and it is a more modern feminist take. And then this last week, because I remember loving it as a child, I picked up Joan of Arc by Mark Twain. So I'll put that one here. Now, these are two very different books, but if you want to read a book about Joan of Arc, which one do you pick up? I would probably give both of these five stars. I think that both of these books were excellent, but why would you read one or the other? Let's talk about it. One stark difference that you're going to find between these two books is Joan is very secular. We are not getting a visions from God kind of story. We are getting a story that feels a little more grounded and is told from a secular perspective. Now, that does not mean that it doesn't have religious themes or that you could take from it that she was guided by God in a more subtle way, but the direct angels and visions, you're not gonna get that in this one. But in Joan of Arc by Mark Twain, you are getting a much more direct, what the legends say, she saw God, she saw these angels, and they uh, talked with her and ministered to her on a regular basis. She heard these voices and that was the truth. So if you like a more religious perspective, the Mark Twain one is going to give you that. Now, Joan, by making it more secular, was able to make this story very character driven. You can connect with Joan. You look at Joan and you're like, She's a person and I understand where she is coming from. She is a real person with flaws and she learns and grows and you feel like you understand Joan as a person. Now, Joan of Arc, she is not a real person. This is no human that has ever lived, like she has no flaws. Everything she does is blessed. She is the paragon of womanhood. So if you are going into the book hoping to connect to Joan as a person, definitely go with Joan, not Joan of Arc. That's not to say there aren't good things about Joan of Arc, but the connecting to the character, I don't think you are going to connect as easily to Joan in Joan of Arc because she has no flaws. She is put on a pedestal. Joan is shown to be a bit of, more of a feminist retelling. And I think by saying it's a feminist retelling, you think that you're getting a huge change in the story. And I think what it really does is it makes Joan a three-dimensional and fully realized character, where in Mark Twain's, you are getting an idealized version of womanhood and of who this person is. And in some ways, it's very religious. It goes back to being that religious thing. She is a saint and this is a portrait of a saint. So if you want more of that paragon of virtue to look up to and try to emulate, you want Joan, but Joan of Arc. But if you want a book where you really understand, you want this other one. Now Joan can be a little bit gritty and a little darker where Joan of Arc has moments of humor and the writing is really witty and clever. And so if you want that gritty, realistic kind of story, you want Joan, but if you want something that has humorous anecdotes and witty writing and clever banter, you want Joan of Arc by Mark Twain. He did a really good job at having these clever instances, these arguments between Joan and a priest, these little back and forth things Mark Twain did a great job at that, and I don't feel like there was very much humor in Joan. Now, some of the reason that you may not connect as firmly to Joan in Joan of Arc is that it is told through a third party. And so it is told by someone who is following Joan around as all of the major events, and you're getting maybe his perspective instead of a more personal perspective of Joan that you would get in Joan. So I think that it kind of depends on where you want to be in the story. If you want to be in Joan's head, you want to be here. If you want to watch everything unfold, you want to be here. But you do get not only just a realistic portrayal of Joan in this in Joan, 
you get a real more realistic and rounded out version of peasant life and of people the peasants in joan are real people with desires and things that they need to do and that they're working towards where in mark twain's book they are blessed for having been touched by the life of joan and are simple folk who want for nothing and are it's very much a caricature of what a sweet peasant who lives in the countryside would be and it's not very realistic that way so if you want maybe more of the realities of life you want joan not joan of arc now the battles in the book so if you like a realistic gritty battle scene you're gonna want joan but if you want more overarching strategy you're gonna want Joan of Arc. So Joan of Arc gives the strategy of how they need to take the city and it talks all about that. And Joan, I feel like misses a lot of that discussion. And a lot of times you feel just dropped into the next battle, the gritty, awful reality of war. And then in the Mark Twain one, you get the idea of what the battle's supposed to be. But when it comes to the actual war scenes, it's a very idealized and we went on to victory kind of idea and not a realistic look at what a battlefield would be like and so if you like looking at the bigger picture and the strategy you might really like Joan of Arc if you want a more gritty realistic portrayal without a ton of the battlefield strategy I think Joan would work better for you with what I have said about these books so far you may think well why would people read Joan of Arc by Mark Twain because the real one the one that you really feel connected to is Joan now, this is where Mark Twain did some amazing things. He went and did so much research. He spent 12 years researching this book. And at the time, it wasn't just a click away to get the information. He had to work hard for it. And he went through the whole trial of Joan of Arc and went through the whole courtroom drama. And Joan ends before it hits any of the courtroom drama. So if you like courtroom dramas, Joan of Arc has a great one toward, you know, you get all of that at the end. Loved that. I think if you want something clever, occasionally humorous, and something that has not only the battles and the war, but you get the courtroom battle, I think you would really like Joan of Arc. If you want something that tugs at your heartstrings, feels really real and present, and you feel super connected to Joan as a character, you want Joan. So I think they are just very different books and different takes on looking at her life. Mark Twain, in talking about his book Joan of Arc, says, I like Joan of Arc best of all my books, and it is the best. I know it perfectly well, and besides, it furnished me seven times the pleasure afforded me by any of the others. Twelve years of preparation and two years of writing, the others needed no pre preparation and got none. So, if you like Mark Twain and you like his voice, you're gonna like this book. It's really, really well done. I'm very glad that I picked it up. I just think from the looking at it as a connection to Joan as a character, you're gonna want Joan, but Joan of Arc is an excellent look at the story behind Joan of Arc and her life and the events in France in the Hundred Years' War. So if you were going to pick up one of these books, which one would you pick up? Or are you wanting to read both? Because I know I had a great time with both. I don't know which one I would have picked up. I'm glad that I read Joan because it made me feel so connected to her, but the amazingly researched and, uh, and meticulous way that Mark Twain went about things along with his really clever writing and the court case were just so worth it as well. So I loved both of these books. And if you have more books that are about Joan of Arc that you have loved, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I will keep going on this. I've enjoyed this story even though you know after reading it a couple times you know how it ends it still is a worthwhile journey so if you have thoughts on either of these books please leave them down in the comments below and i will see you all on another book wrap up soon